Hi, this is Francis with Blackrock Castle Observatory with a guide on using Stellarium Web to find out what's in the night sky. Stellarium Web is a spin-off of the very popular planetarium program, Stellarium, which can be downloaded for desktop or laptop use. Stellarium Web lives in a browser. When you first open Stellarium Web, you'll be presented with a view of the sky. If you look around the screen, there are various icons and menus which you can use to modify the view. Stellarium Web tends to use a default location based on your computer. If it gets it wrong, you can change that location in the bottom left corner where you see the name. I've got mine set for Cork. But you can choose any location, type it in here and search, and then set it to use this location, or double check that auto location is turned off. The bottom right corner gives us a time menu. We can open this up, change the date or the time, go to the current real time and pause and unpause. I like the time display because it gives an indication of the daylight hours and the nighttime hours. So it's very easy to see as you go throughout the year or change the month how the length of day and night vary. There's quite a large menu on the left with view settings that you can change and a list of where you will find the planets. If you don't want to see that, just click on the top menu and that will slide it over. But it's very, very useful for the planets, so it's worth keeping an eye on it that you can have a look on the night that you're observing, which planets are visible in the nighttime sky, which ones would only be visible in the daytime, i.e. you can't see them because the sky is too bright. So tonight for July 1st, we can see that the moon is visible rising after midnight. Mercury will be visible just before dawn and both Jupiter and Saturn will be visible most of the night and Venus and Mars very shortly after sunset. Now the sky itself can be moved and scrolled in and out. So using the mouse wheel, we can pull back to see a little bit more of the sky. And you can click and pull the sky to look at everything. This would be lying on your back, possibly down a pit to be able to see a view like this. And you can also zoom into parts of the horizon and see what might be visible. Here I'm looking northwest at half past 11 at night, and I've got Mars and Venus just setting below the horizon that I have here. Now this sky is still quite bright because it's only a little bit after the sunset. So we might go a little bit later. This is going one second a second. That's going to be pretty slow. Let's speed up a little bit, maybe go an hour later. And now it's much darker and we can see many more stars clearly. To work out which constellation they're part of, we can click some of the icons at the bottom. Either the constellation icon, which brings up the line and name version, or the constellation art, which shows us a view the traditional Greek constellations and their images in the sky. The rest of the icons are fairly self-explanatory, although the azimuth grid may be something that you are less familiar with. It shows you an angle above the horizon and a direction. So if we look at our sky, you can imagine that we have sort of a cage above us, directly overhead, is the crosshairs in the middle. As we look up there, you may notice that we can see some faint objects that we can click on the sky, and we might be able to see satellites passing. 
If you choose a planet, it is possible to zoom into that planet by scrolling with the mouse. We might turn off the grid for this. And if you click on an object in the sky, you get a small information panel giving you some information about it. Perhaps its distance, its size, and its position in the sky. This as alt is related to the azimuth grid, which is how we really describe where things are in the sky. If you'd like to use this to go out and view the sky, there is a special setting, Night Mode, which gives a red cast to everything. This is useful if your eyes are dark adapted from being outside for 15 to 20 minutes. This red glow will have less of an effect on your dark adapted eyes, so it's more suitable if you are going to take this out for some actual sky gazing. Also worth noting is the observing log over at the top right. The calendar that is attached to it can give you an indication of what is happening over the course of a month. One warning though, there isn't a solar eclipse this month. I think Stellarium Web has a bug that if a solar eclipse could happen, i.e. its new moon, it thinks it is happening and that's not the case but it is useful for marking the position of the moon, marking the phase of the moon, marking close passes of the moon to planets. And you can see that for any month and any year if you choose that. Have fun exploring Stellarium Web. It's completely free to use. All you need is a browser to be able to access it.